Okay, here's another clip of the week, and what I like to talk about today is the modeling factors. And now, what are the modeling factors? Modeling factors are something that will help you make your drawings look three-dimensional, and let's dive right on into it. So, basically, what you want to look for is you want to look for a highlight, a light halftone, a dark halftone, okay? Then there's a reflected light sometimes in the shadow, then an accent where one thing touches another, and then a cast shadow, okay? So those are all the Mollen factors. Highlight, light half tone, dark half tone, reflected light, accent, cast shadow. So now when I'm shading sometimes, like if I wanna make something look totally three dimensional and I'm doing like this soft kind of fuzzy tone, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a circular motion just like that. So I'm scribbling in essence and I'm scribbling and you know I'm trying to show this sphere as a three dimensional form. So basically this thing that I'm doing right now that is what I call the line that separates the light from the dark. I show that to all of my students in class. And so next to that line that separates the light from the dark, this is your light half tone. This light little tone that helps this sphere turn from the shadow into the light. And then what I'm scribbling on right now, this short little choppy stroke, is my dark half tone. And then right over here, this like little oval that I'm drawing, that would be your reflected light. So light comes down, hits the floor or the tabletop or whatever this ball is on, bounces into the shadow, and you've got a reflected light. Now what most people will do is they'll make that reflected light too light, okay? And then the, the object that you're trying to get to look three-dimensional won't because your lights and your shadows are equal. So then you've got your accent, okay? And your accent is just a fancy way of saying where one thing touches another. So say like on the torso of the body where the arm, the top of the bicep touches the model's chest, there's usually a dark line over there. So that would be your accent. And so you relate this to the body. So that's going to be my blackest black and then my cast shadow. So now my cast shadow is going to be darker, closest to where it's next to the object. And then as the cast shadow fades off, it's going to get lighter and the edges are going to get softer. Okay, so now maybe with my line down here, I'll go like a little bit darker in the shadow. Okay, I can really work on this forever, but I just wanted to show you the basics of this. Um, and then you, if you want to make something look totally three-dimensional, you need to put some background tone in. So I'm going to put some background tone against my light. Okay, and then don't be afraid to lose an edge. I'm just going to like lose an edge over here. I'll have a, sh a sharper edge right against my light. Okay, little turn in plane on the edge. But the rule of thumb is you want to keep your lights light and you want to keep your darks dark. See how I'm keeping my lights light and I'm really not shading too much. I mean, I can come back in here with my pencil and you know, work on this forever and make it look totally three dimensional. I'm just going to scribble in this background a little bit more, create some atmosphere. So now if I wanted to, I can also draw up my eraser and sharpen that edge and I can pop out that reflected light a little bit. I can clean up my cast shadow. And um, yeah, so let me just push this dark half tone one more time. So what my next clip is going to be, it's going to be all about taking these modeling factors and pushing them on to something that you can relate to, like a portrait or um, a wrist or a forearm or a leg or something like that. But I just wanted to introduce them to you and you need these modeling factors to make something look three-dimensional. Okay, um, so we'll see you soon. Part two of the modeling factors clip and I worked on this a little bit off camera um, and I just want to show you how when you do this scribbling motion, um, you know, now things are starting to look like a little bit more atmospheric. So you see how I'm just kind of like scribbling and I'm going over the lines, I'm going, I'm merging my background with my foreground. I've pushed my black over here. I've also gone dark with this under plane line. Okay, now if I wanted to, I can just push this dark half tone. So yes, I've been talking a big time about, you know, the scribbling thing, but you also want to draw with the way that the object, uh, the form of the object. So, you know, I'm going to wrap around this way. I'm going to do a couple of um, going with the lay of the land, as I call it, and I'm just wrapping around. And so you see also that I did the background tone, and the background tone now starts to create atmosphere. So if I wanted to now, I'm just going to scribble this out. 
and I'm going to scribble this out down here. So if this was like my composition, you know, my composition would be like kind of like a, a little kind of a box like that. So you see in the background how I did the dark. I use the dark or the middle tone to pop the light, and then I've got the light to pop the dark. And so I'm using a classic uh, reverse gradation. And if you s kind of study all the old master paintings, you will see that reverse gradation in just about every old master's painting there is. And it's just something that you want to take and, and use in whatever you're working on, um, whether it's a comic book or an animation or an illustration. I use reverse gradations all the time in my um, illustrations. So, uh, all right, so we're going to kind of come to the end. Once again, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate that. You know, uh, if you want to support, support the clips and I'm going to try, like I said, to upload a clip every single week. Just visit the website and um, look around, see if there's anything there that you might want to use for yourself. Okay, so I'll talk to you soon.